I'm most excited about for next year. You might be wondering, like, well, next year, why are you talking about it now? Well, it's set to release about a year from now. I think July 11th, 2025 is the current expected release date. But the main reason uh, that I want to talk about it now is because over the last week or so, there has been so many set photos that have leaked that it's just been on my mind and I have been so so excited for this movie and that is the upcoming Superman movie now for a long time it's been reported that the title will be Superman Legacy but I think that might just be a working title I don't actually know if that's what the, the final title is going to end up being. But the upcoming Superman film, I am extremely excited about this movie. And it's not just a comic book movie thing, because if, if you guys watch a lot of my stuff, especially my movie stuff, you'll know that I've been like turned off of the MCU for a hot minute now. Um, I haven't been watching any of the shows. I haven't liked any of the recent movies. And honestly, I haven't watched a comic book movie. Oh, I can't even remember the last time. I genuinely cannot remember the last time. I am genuinely so, so excited for this upcoming Superman movie for so many reasons. First and foremost, let's hop into the cast. I have this cast photo here um, that somebody put together. I found this on the Superman subreddit. They have your cast, David Cornsweet as Superman. Rachel Brosnahan as Lois Lane, Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, Skyler Gizondo as Jimmy Olsen, Maria Gabriela de Faria as the engineer, Wendell Pierce as Barry White, Sarah Zambeo as Schmacher, Terrence Rosemore as Otis, Isabella Merced as Hawk Girl, Edie Gadeki as Mr. Terrific, Anthony Kerrigan as Metamorpho, Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner, Beck Bennett as Steve Lombard, Neva Howell as Martha Kent, and Pruitt Taylor Vince as Jonathan Kent. And I really, really love this cast for a number of reasons. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry, I said to check something there. So, David Corn Sweat. I'm going to be honest, a lot of these actors, save for a couple, I have not really seen in anything. I know Rachel Brosnahan has been in a few shows I've watched, um, I saw that she was in House of Cards, which I watched, but off the top of my head, I can't remember who she played. Same with The Blacklist, I've seen like a season of The Blacklist, and I don't really remember her. Uh, but I do know she has a comedic background, I, I haven't seen David Gordon, so I didn't anything. I'm a big fan of Nicholas Holt, uh, watching the original 
original skins from the UK, which is one of my guilty pleasure shows. I loved him in that, and watching his evolution as an actor since then. I really like Nicholas Holt. Um, I have some reservations about him being Lex Luthor and playing a supervillain, but I'll trust him because uh, he's been good in things in the past. What I like about this cast is there is uh, some comedic backgrounds here, especially with Beck Bennett as Steve Lombard. I love Beck Bennett. He is my favorite Saturday Night Live cast member, easily. Uh, Nathan Fillion has dipped his toe in a little bit of comedy. Anthony Carrigan, who is playing Metamorpho, he uh, has a comedy background. Rachel Brosnan has done a little bit of comedy. And James Gunn has said that he does want to have some comedic elements in this. But he made a very specific statement saying that he doesn't want it to be like Guardians of the Galaxy, where it's like a full-blown comedy, which I appreciate that. But what I really like, if you look at this cast, you notice there's a lot of Daily Planet employees here. And that's something that we did not really see in The Man of Steel or the other um, Zack Snyder DC movies. Uh, the, uh, Superman's life as Clark Kent, his interactions with people, as Clark Kent with people at the Daily Planet outside of Lois Lane was practically non-existent. But even the minor characters here that a lot of casual uh, comic book fans or casual moviegoers wouldn't be familiar with have been casted. And, um, James Gunn said that the film will focus on the balance of Clark Kent and Superman and how he manages being one without letting it affect the other. And he said there's going to be a lot of time spent in the Daily Planet and with the Daily Planet employees. And I absolutely love that. Now I know like in 2024, this is a very um, cynical time period. Um, they don't really make like happy, feel good movies especially for adults anymore, but even for kids, they always kind of have a little bit of that. A little bit of that cynicism to them. And that's why you see things like, you know, and so nowadays I say things like Superman is one of my favorite superheroes, but a lot of people nowadays find him boring. They're like, oh, the big blue boy scout, oh, you know, he's just, he's so powerful, he can't lose, like, what's the, what's the, how is that any fun? And you see nowadays, especially, like, all of the ideas, like, people are like, oh, an evil Superman is a much more interesting idea, like, you have Homelander now, Omni-Man, Brightburn, a lot of your general audiences will find those darker iterations of the character more interesting. And that's not to say I don't find those characters interesting. Um, this Halloween I dressed up as Homelander, so I'm not going to be hypocritical and say I don't like those characters. I do. But you even saw like Man of Steel. That version of Superman had a little bit of that edge to him. A little bit of that rough around the edges vibe. But in my opinion, that's not really Superman. And Superman's stories are interesting because he is so powerful. It's him being an alien trying to be a human, trying to fit in, trying to find his place in the universe while having the 
these powers while being the indestructible man of steel. And he could be bad. He could be a god and take over the world. But he doesn't. But he doesn't because he is Superman. And he's the symbol of hope. He's the symbol of, you know, I'm going to stand up for people who can't stand up for themselves. And in my opinion, that's what Superman is. My favorite Superman movie is the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. Not all of them, some of them are, but especially that first one. And it really feels like James Gunn understands that. And he is building this Superman story to be more like that one. To make Superman be that symbol of hope again and maybe take some of the cynicism out of people about this character. Uh, David Cornsweet, he did an interview. Uh, he was talking to some fans. And he said, even though this has a fully original story, the movie will have the vibes of All-Star Superman and Superman for All Seasons, um, which are both uplifting, <laughs> feel-good stories, and James Gunn has also mentioned All-Star Superman multiple times while talking about and promoting this film. All-Star Superman is one of the most beloved and considered one of the best Superman stories. So, I'm all for drawing inspiration from that. Um, James Gunn has also said that this is going to be a younger iteration of the hero than um, Henry Cavill's. And he says it's going to be a coming-of-age story, but not an origin story. We all know Superman's origin at this point. But seeing him handling being young in Metropolis, managing his job and being a superhero, managing these responsibilities, I really like that a lot. Um, also, we have a couple other castings that weren't on that list. Millie Alcock has been cast as Supergirl. Uh, Maxwell Lord is being played by Sean Gunn. No, 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 no surprises there. Sean Gunn being in a James Gunn movie. But I think it's interesting. And actually what I kind of like is that we're coming into this, the first movie, and we have a bunch of established superheroes already. So I'm like, oh, he's the first one, and now we're going to go find these other ones. It's like, no, we have Superman. Hawk Girl already exists. Guy Gardner already exists. Mr. Terrific already exists. Um, and uh, Metamorpho already exists. I have a feeling that Supergirl might end up just being uh, like a cameo at the end of the movie. But what I find interesting is that they cast somebody so much younger than David Cornsweet that the comics can sometimes. Kara is usually depicted as younger than Superman, but sometimes they're a little bit closer in age. Sometimes she's like in her early 20s, uh, depending on how adult they want to make her stories. But Millie Alcock is. How old is she? She is. Oh my gosh, she's 24. I thought she was a teenager. <laughs> okay, well, she can, she can pull off playing a teenager. I thought she was like 18. Um, but I like that casting for her. Um, we're gonna look now at just a handful of these pictures. Um, so if you don't want to have anything spoiled or you don't want to see any of these pictures, turn the video off now. Okay, so first and foremost, I just want to look at all of the Superman suits uh, for our prominent um, uh, 
the cinematic Superman here, so first and foremost, Christopher Reeve. Like I said, he is my favorite Superman by far. I, I think even if I end up loving this movie, he'll probably still be my favorite Superman. He, he just looks like Superman. The suit is perfect. The hair is perfect. Everything. Uh, and he really embodied the character. Brandon Routh. A lot of people like this suit, but honestly, I never did. I thought that the red was too dark. Uh, I don't like the sort of plasticky S on the chest and the S on the belt. Now we come to Henry Cavill, and everything is, well, the blue is very dark. And the texture, uh, you know, it's a very modernized take on the soup. You get rid of the trunks. Um, at the time, I really loved this soup, to be honest. I really did. But I think as we get further and further away from the movies, the more I look at the suit and it just feels... I don't know, I like the idea of, like, his mom helped him make the suit. And I don't think Henry Cavill's Superman, I don't think Martha Kent could have helped him make that thing. Uh, and now we come to the, the, the new suit, David Gordon's wet now. I'm not a huge fan of the S, so I'm just gonna throw that out there. They're using the Kingdom Come S. I get it, um, that's also the S they've been using in the My Adventures with Superman cartoon, which I absolutely have been loving that cartoon. And I know that the collar is controversial. Some comics have the collar, some don't. Personally, I like the collar. And what I love about this new suit is, well, first of all, they brought back the trunks. I think the trunks have to be on a Superman suit, but they did the trunks in like a, a modern way. If you look at the Cavill trunks, they kind of look like whitey dighties a little bit that are just red. But these, they're like, they look that they might almost be leather, and you can see the stitching lines in them. They have those bell loops instead of just having like those if you look at the Cavill or the Routh trunks with the, the red lines across the belt, they're kind of flat. But on the, on the new trunks, you see it's like a flap almost, and it's like stitched in. I really love that, and I love the sort of paneling. There's like paneling on the suit in different areas, like on the shoulders, and like on the, next to the abs. I just love the texture that the suit has. It's not flat. And it's almost like the perfect combination of like, it has some of the texture from the Cavill suit, but not too much. And then the elements I really like, like the lighter blue and the red and the drunks from the Cavill suit. Or from the, um, um, the Reeve suit, the Christopher Reeve suit. And I just, I really, the, when I first saw this suit, I'm going to be honest, I didn't like it. But the more I look at it, uh, and I see it in close-ups especially, I am, I am praying that they don't CGI this suit like Marvel did with Spider-Man. Because in, in Spider-Man Homecoming, they had a real suit they had him wearing. And it looked really, really, really good. And I thought they were just going to CGI the mask. But they ended up CGIing the whole suit. And it looked like rubber. And there was no texture to it. There was no give. There was no folds. And it just looks fake. And you go look at someone like the Alex Ross Superman artwork. Maybe I'll put one up right now. Some of the Alex Ross artwork. And you can see the lines of the fabric. And that's what I want to see. So I really like this new suit. Um, the next picture I want to look at is just going to be this picture of him 
obviously taking off for a flight, you can get a little bit better look at the suit, especially on that far right panel, the boots, all of it, uh, you know, you can, and so obviously this is the pose of him taking off to fly, um, I love how there's, you know, you can see there's like knee pads built into the knees of the suit, so it looks like maybe he has built some padding in there, very utilitarian. But yeah, I just, I, this, this shot especially makes me really, really like this suit. Uh, but then we contrast that. So, so look at him there, look at his face, look at his posture. But then we got a picture of him in, as Clark Kent. And I love this because, just like Christopher Reeve, uh, and even Brandon Routh did this pretty good, he does look different, because the thing is always like, oh, Superman, just put glasses on, whatever, like, I would be able to tell the Clark Kent Superman, but look at what he's doing here, his hair is completely different, it's, it's like, uh, curly and disheveled, he has the glasses, of course, he's wearing the suit to hide his physique, and you can look and see that the suit is baggy, if you look at the amount of wrinkling, on the arm, it's like, it's like this I'm wearing now. This is a very baggy sweater on me. I have a bunch of, here's my arm. I have a bunch of extra arm. But he's doing that with the suit to hide his physique. So it's things like that. I'm like, I feel like they really nailed this Clark Kent. Um, and you, you can believe that uh, people would not think this is Superman because he does look different. Um, another really good one, this, you can see Mr. Terrific here and they absolutely nailed the Mr. Terrific look. You have the mask over his eyes, the, the black leather jacket. Uh, he looks like he's right out of the comic books. They absolutely nailed this casting with Mr. Terrific. Um, and you can really see the way the suit stands out here, the bright colors contrasting with everything around it. You have the sort of olive green Humvee in the back. You have the very basic black, red, and white color scheme, Mr. Terrific. Even the people in the background, you have somebody wearing military camo. So I feel like they're going to have, I feel like a stylistic choice for this movie is going to be Superman being very bright and colorful and standing out in a very muted world, a very sort of dingy world. And that idea is reinforced when we see this picture of him meeting with Guy Gardner and Hot Girl and Mr. Terrific as well. Uh, we see Mr. Terrific appears to have some sort of jetpack apparatus on. We know he, he uses technology. Hot Girl's, of course, flying unassisted because she'll have wings CGI'd on. And we have Superman talking to Guy Gardner, but let's zoom in a little bit on him and Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner is uh, our Green Lantern, of course. But look at his outfit. Mainly white. You have black. A small little hint of green. But standing next to him, you have Superman wearing a bright blue and red suit. And you look at Hot Girl. Mainly black little bit of hints of the gold, but again, 90% black, and there's Superman in bright blue and red standing out, being colorful, I love that, and also notice, um, they're wearing, uh, Lord Tech gear, uh, some, I don't have all the pictures here, but they're all wearing that same logo that you see on Guy Gardner's chest, uh, so I, I think the idea here is going to be that Maxwell Lord is in charge of the Justice League International. And that's who these guys are. They're the Justice League International. 
So they're all wearing like branded clothing. Now, Maxwell Lord has a few different ways he's portrayed in the comics. Sometimes he's a villain, sometimes he's kind of just a gray character. So I don't know if he's going to be a villain, whether he's the villain of this movie, maybe a villain in future movies, like a long-term villain. Because we have a few villains here, right? We have the engineer. And I kind of assume the engineer is going to be the main villain of this movie. Uh, she controls, like, nanobots and stuff like that. But also Lex Luthor, but I don't know if Lex Luthor is going to be, like, omnipresent in this film. Or if they're just going to introduce him. Or cameo him. Or if they're setting him up for future movies, but there's also Maxwell Lord. So there's a lot of possibilities here. But I feel like at some point, they're going to ditch these costumes and go into more comic accurate costumes. That's just my thought on the matter. But I absolutely love what, we're, what I'm seeing here with how Superman contrasts with all these other characters. Two last pieces here, and in my opinion, these are the best pieces of news. This first picture, we see Superman smiling and carrying this young child. And that comes from this video clip. Uh, I'll put it up here now with no audio. I, I might have to, like, mirror it and reverse it or something. I don't know how copyright will work. Um, I might just leave it and see, hope, hope for the best. Uh, but we see Superman flying in, and these kids, and now look, I'm gonna pause it. Hawk Girl, Guy Gardner, and Mr. Uh, Terrific all came down with Superman. They walk past Nobody comes out to meet them. They just walk on. Superman comes out. All of the kids come running over. And he like stops to talk to the kids and take pictures. And all of that. And I... I that is... That is what I want. Superman being the symbol of hope. He comes down and the kids love him. And he's talking to them and, and and comparing that to like the dark I like some of the Zack Snyder I don't want to be one of those people trashing those movies I liked Henry Cavill I liked some of those movies but they were darker in tone they were grittier and I think they're part of the reason now people have this idea like oh Superman is boring Homelander is a far more interesting character Omni-Man's a far more interesting character, whatever. And people can't see how good a happy, hopeful Superman could be. So seeing that, seeing the way the kids come out, it just it fills me with so much hope for this movie. And that it can introduce younger audiences who maybe haven't read the Superman comics they're not familiar with how he's portrayed in those comics. They haven't seen the Christopher Reeve movies. They only know the modern interpretations and the modern discourse. It'll give them an introduction to what he's meant to be like and, and hopefully change some of the, the narrative around the character. I don't know, I'm just so excited about this movie, I just felt the need to share this. I know this is so off the beaten path from what I usually do, but I just had to get my thoughts out about this. I'm really excited about this movie. Uh, just had to live one more year to see it. <laughs> I hope you guys are excited too. If you have any thoughts about this Superman movie, anything you're hoping to see in this movie, uh, or any thoughts on the suit, the casting, all that.
always hear your comments down below. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. And until next time, guys. Bye-bye.